Hey everybody, Bob here and welcome to another Making Stuff video. I have ordered a new Torch Height controller. It has been shipped, I have received it. So let's head on over to the plasma table where we can install it. This is a Proma Compact 150 Torch Height controller. This is what I decided to go with, mainly because they have a configuration for Linux CNC and that is what I'm using to control the plasma cutter. It's a very simple hookup. Uh, this is where you hook up everything to your computer. You just supply it between seven and 35 volts DC. And then these four connections are uh, relay connections that you would connect to the input of your parallel port or your breakout board. And then on the other side, this is where you connect the arc voltage for your plasma cutter. So let me head over to the plasma cutter and I'll show you how I'm gonna wire this up. This is the side of the plasma cutter and you can see here I've already made the connection for the torch to be turned on and off by the computer. And what I would like to do is mount the torch height controller right here on the side. And the reason is because these wires that connect to the arc voltage, the connections are right inside, right behind here and you also want to make those as short as possible and you really don't want to have that arc voltage coming outside of the machine. So like I said, I want to mount it here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 3D printed box that I made and I'm just going to mount it right here on the side. And the way this works is you just put the torch height controller in here like so. And then the height of the box is the same as the height of the torch height controller. So then when you put it on the box, it it's secure. You've got the back of the plasma cutter pushing this out and then this isn't rattling around. And then I'm also going to put a six pin connector like so in this hole up here on the top and then that's how I'm going to make the electrical connections that go to the computer which would be these connections here. So let me start drilling some holes and doing some wiring and we'll get this all wired up. All right, so I've got it all hooked up. I've got power to the torch height controller, but the plasma cutter itself is turned off. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to just run a test on the plasma cutter and it's gonna simulate uh, cutting and having the arc voltage go up and down. And then I'm gonna look on Linux CNC and make sure that it's reading everything that the torch height controller is sending it. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna put it in test mode and you just hold down both of these buttons until it says TST. Okay, and now you can see the voltage is changing and then the arc OK LED is lit and then the up and the down LED will light as this voltage changes and it's really not changing, it's just a simulation. So now I need to look on Linux CNC and make sure that it's getting these signals for the arc OK and the up and the down. So let's take a look here at Linux CNC and you can see that I have installed the configuration from Proma and I'll put a link to that in the description of the video and it adds all of this over here on the right hand side of the screen and if we look here at the adjustments you can see that we are getting the up and down signals from the torch height controller as well as the arc OK signal. Alright so here's another change I had to make to the Z axis and I had to remove this plate and replace it with this one. This is a little floating switch configuration that I've made. Uh, the software for uh, Linux CNC requires this with the THC controller and it's basically just a drawer slide and a switch right here and what it's going to do is every time it goes to pierce to make a start out a cut, that's called a pierce, it's going to lower the z-axis until this switch is engaged and then it's going to know that it has hit the zero point and then it will raise the switch or it will raise the z-axis up a predetermined amount of height so that every starting uh, pierce is the same on the metal no matter how warped it is. Now this is just a little temporary thing that I've built. Uh, I saw some guys on the Linux forum that had built some like this and this is just, it's a little bit too wobbly for me. It'll work for testing this out, but I'll probably build something a little bit nicer with uh, something a little better than a drawer slide for the uh, linear uh, bearing there. All right, so here's a few things that they're not telling you in the documentation, and I had to go to the forums to 
find this information out, so I'm sharing it with you guys now. And one of them is that your torch height controller takes over the Z-axis. So basically, it's hijacking your Z-axis. There's no need to zero the Z-axis. Um, you can even remove all of the references to the Z-axis from your G-code. And as long as you've got the torch on and torch off command, this will work. And I have actually gone in and removed all of the Z-code or the Z-axis from the G-code on a few test files and it did work like they said it would on the forums. So you don't have to zero your Z-axis because that's what it's going to do on the touch off. So you can see here for this demonstration, I've got it at three inches uh, above zero. So another thing that they're not telling you is that if you hit the F9 key, it's going to put this kind of in a test mode. Now what this test mode will do is it will cause the z-axis to go down and touch off of the metal and then when it comes back up to the predetermined height that you've set on the settings it's going to fire the torch and then at that point you can manually move the torch using the arrow keys on your keyboard so what you can do is you can once the torch fires you can move the gantry you can move the x-axis across and you can dial in your voltage settings and your uh, height settings to get a good starting point for your torch height controller settings. And what you would do is you would just keep making, cutting lines in like a scrap piece of metal until you get it close and get it dialed in. And that's what I've done. But I'll show you here, I'll go ahead and hit F9. And what it's gonna do is you can see, let me lower it here. You can see I can get my hand in between the torch and the piece of metal and it, it's not zeroed but it's still going to go down and it's going to touch off the piece of metal and then it'll be at the correct height so it's going to do this on at the beginning of every cut so there you go it touched off now it's waiting for the arc okay and I don't have the plasma cutter turned on so it's not getting the arc okay signal so it's continuing to touch off until it gets that arc OK signal, which it won't get in this case. I think it'll try four or five times and then it'll turn itself off. Okay, and here's my scrap piece of metal and I didn't show this on camera because it's just kind of boring to watch this go back and forth. But uh, I started out over here and I hit the F9 key and then started manually moving the gantry and the torch over to the right and you can see on my first try it's it pierced it was making cuts then right about here it stopped uh, making it through the piece of metal so then I upped the or I lowered the voltage and on, I lowered the voltage on the torch height controller tried again and it didn't quite do as well so I just kept playing with the settings then you can see up here it pretty much started piercing all the way through and then by the time I got to here I had a pretty good cut going so I got my initial values for my torch height controller voltage and feed rates using this method and then I dialed it in by cutting some Hackaday logos so here's the first Hackaday logo I cut and I did this one at 82 volts and that voltage is the setting on the torch height controller. That's not the voltage on the plasma cutter because you can't change that voltage. But you can see here there's a lot of heavy dross on here and it looked like the torch was too high, I believe. It was uh, traveling too far above the metal and that's what I think was causing a lot of the dross. So then I bumped that up 10 volts to 92 and you can see it made much better cut much cleaner cut so then I bumped it up to a hundred and I'm starting to get this heavy dross again you can see here along the corners the curves there so that's with it set at a hundred and so I upped it again just to see what would happen. This is 110, and you can tell by looking at the edges. 
I believe at this point it was too close to the metal. I could be wrong. I could have started out too close and now it's too far. But uh, same deal. So I know I'm going the wrong direction. So I went back and tried 95, which it did pretty good. You can see there, there's hardly any dross on here. I also played with some of the settings on uh, the torch height on the, the, uh, the settings on screen and dialed it in a little bit better. And what I settled on here was 98 volts. That got, that got me the best cut so far at 98 volts. And here's one I did without the torch height controller compared to with the torch height controller. So I'm getting about the same results now, but I'm getting torch height. So this is what I'm going to run with right now. All right, so it's all hooked up and configured. So let's start cutting some stuff with it. Okay, so here are the results from that cut, and I'm not going to show you the whole sign here because I don't want to ruin the surprise, but uh, I did have one little screw up right here, and you can see on this R it did not finish cutting, and the reason why this happened was because the tip on the uh, plasma cutter just totally disintegrated, and I had to uh, change the tip in the middle of that cut but I was able to use the run from here command and save this so this didn't turn into scrap metal and you can see that it did a pretty good job on the cuts there. All right, and so this was the first time that I have done multiple jobs in one cut and the other parts I made were these little corner pieces and this is for a project that I'm working on right now. It's another video and they all work except for that one right there. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but that didn't really line up. And I think that is the wobble from that drawer slide uh, that the torch is mounted on. So as soon as I get that fixed, um, I think this thing will be ready to go and we'll have that torch height controller all set up and 100% working. So if you'd like some more information on this project, just head over to the Making Stuff webpage I've got a lot of additional information over there. I've got links to all of the materials and items that were used in the project. There's also links to Linux CNC and a playlist for all the videos in this project. And if you like the video, please give me that thumbs up and please consider subscribing. If you're not a subscriber, ring that bell so you don't miss any upcoming Making Stuff videos. And thanks for watching.